Hello and welcome to Unit 6. In the previous couple units, we're focused on time intervals. Coordinate time, proper time, and the space-time interval. In this unit, spatial intervals will come back into play. We'll do so by taking a geometric look at space-time again. And we'll um, look at a construction called a two-observer diagram. And that's a diagram that lets you see how two different observers in different reference frames, what the space-time coordinates would be for um, a given event in space-time. So it's like um, two reference frames for the price of one, two reference frames on one diagram. It'll take us a little while to build up this, um, this diagram, we'll sort of do it carefully, step by step. And at the end, we'll have both a powerful geometric way of looking at um, how different observers um, would have different space-time coordinates for the same event. And we'll have um, an algebraic result called the Lorentz transformations, which is going to be the relativistic version of the Galilean transformations that we started the course with. So those will be like a dictionary that will let us translate the space-time coordinates for an event as measured in one reference frame into the space-time coordinates for that same event measured in another reference frame. We'll get started, as I said, by thinking about geometry and space-time. So let's get going. So let's start, as we often do, by thinking about space instead of space-time. So these are x and y, not x and t. And we know how to measure distance in space. It's given by the distance formula, the metric for Euclidean space, x and y, which is the Pythagorean theorem. Delta x squared plus delta y squared is delta d squared. So the picture is we have two points, the origin and then this blue point here. And we know to calculate the distance between them given an x and a y. So just um, some numbers for this example. If delta x is 3 and delta y is 4, over 3, up 4, we can calculate that the uh, distance between the points is 5. This is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Plugging into this formula, delta x, 3 squared, delta y, 4 squared, that's 9 plus 16, which is 25. Take the square root of both sides, square root of d squared is d, Square, square root of 25 is 5. So the distance between these two points is 5, and that's something that observers in different coordinate systems should agree on. This is something that's physical. It shouldn't depend on how we orient our axes. All right, so let's investigate that idea a little bit further. And let's say, suppose there happened to be some coordinate system where delta x was 2. And then I wonder, in that coordinate system, what would delta y be? So I can use this formula and solve for delta y. So let's do that. Delta d squared is delta x squared minus, del uh, whoops, plus delta y squared, not a minus yet. So then, uh, let's see, I want to get delta y by itself. I'm going to subtract delta x squared from both sides. And then I'll take the square root of both sides to get delta y by itself. And then the last thing to do is to plug in delta x is 2, delta d is 5. 5 squared minus 2 squared is delta y. 5 squared is 25, 2 squared is 4, 25 minus 4 is 21. Square root of 21, I get about 4.6. All right, so we've done a bit of algebra. Let's think about what this means geometrically. 
So what I claim this means is so there's some other reference frame, some coordinate system, some choice for axes, for the same two points that has a delta x of 2 and a delta y of 4.6. Why do I claim that? Because um, this quantity delta d, the distance, is the same in all reference frames. And so if you tell me what delta x is in one reference frame, I can figure out delta y. All right, so let's see if we can um, picture this. So here's another coordinate system. It's a set of axes, and they're just drawn, well, clear and then with red. What does it mean to have a delta x of 2 and a delta y of 5? All right, so I claim I can, let's see, go to right about here. So if I rotate the red axes a little bit to the right, then we get coordinates of 2 and 4.6. I'm going to tape this down so it doesn't move. All right, so let's, let's look at that. So here, I can read this, the coordinate for this blue point off of this set of axes. It's over 1, 2. So that has a red x of 2. What's y? I can go over here to the y-axis. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, eh, maybe around 4 and a half. And that's about what we have here. Maybe uh, we could rotate it this way. So then this is going up and down, left, right. And we could see, all right, this, is, this blue point is a point that has an x of 2 and a y of a little more than 4 and a half, right around 4 and a half. Um, or, you know, we could view with the black axes, which has, um, it's easier to see this way, 3 and 4, to, and both of those give me a distance of 5. Okay, so this would be called a two-observer diagram. We can have two observers using different coordinate systems, and they're going to have different values for coordinates. They're using different coordinate systems. We can see, we can read right off this diagram what different coordinates are. And we can also see on this diagram that um, the, they'll, they'll agree on the distance between the two points. So that's something that's physical and real and um, does not depend on how we rotate our axes. So let me say a little more about the geometry of what's going on here. So you have two points in space, a distance between them that doesn't change, and then um, a coordinate system, and then another coordinate system laid on top. And as I rotate, the distance, the length of this blue line stays the same according to whatever frame I'm in, and the red uh, coordinates they're changing all the time. So here, this is where red and the original coordinates agree. If I go to here, this is where delta x is 2. I can make delta x go to 0 by going all the way over here. And then y would be 5. And in all cases, all of these different cases, as I'm rotating to get different coordinate systems, in all cases, the distance is the same. Algebraically, what that means is, uh, I don't like using red, it looks shouty. I'm going to use brown. That we've got this. 5 squared is delta x squared plus delta y squared. So we have this relationship. And what this relationship gives you is a circle. And like we can see that here. So imagine that as I do this rotation, this blue dot leaves a trace of ink on the plastic as I move it around. What that blue dot would trace out would be a circle. We could also have the same effect. We could move the um, the 
two points underneath the plastic. Maybe that's easier to see, I don't know, but it's harder for me to move that way. So, um, so again, this is the thing that's true for any delta x for any delta y. So um, this equation, mathematically, geometrically, this is the equation for a circle, a circle of radius 5. So this is a circle of radius 5. So I'm going to draw that on, and because I'm not always great at drawing circles, I'm actually going to do that with a compass. And I guess, let's see, I can do, do it this way. So I'm going to... Right. I'm going to do that. Let's see. Put that right there. And so that's going to trace out a circle. So, so maybe notice what happens to this y, this red y axis here. Right? As I move this around, this is this is falling along that circle. So suppose now, all right. So I want to get my two observer diagram so that it's something like this. So this goes, this corresponds to this case with a delta x of 2 and a delta y of 4.6. All right, so I'm going to attempt, let's see, to draw, uh, to draw this on. So we're going to have this like this. I'm going to put that there. And, okay. So there is another y-axis, and there is another x-axis. I could call this y prime and x prime. And I guess the key thing I want to sh you to look at from this is that To get from this axis to, to this axis, I move along a circle. So my reading for 2 would be, well, let's see, right? 2 on the red axis, oops, 2 on the red axis would be in a little bit there like that. So this also would have moved along a circle, also would have moved along a circle. All right, so this is a two-observer diagram, and we get that by starting with x and y, and we rotate them this way. So what we're going to do in the next couple videos is think about a two-observer diagram, but in space-time instead of space, and that means we're going to be working with a different metric so that the geometry of this is going to be different. The concepts, the goal for what we're trying to do is going to be the same, but the geometry will be different.